right. In this session, we're going to examine relative velocity. Relative velocity is a term that was coined by H.M. Gartley in his Stock Market Experience Tables, published in 1940. If you're interested, the tables are available in the paperback edition of Profits in the Stock Market, available through geometrictrading.com. Today, as we examine the uh, term relative velocity, you'll start to realize that today it's referred to as relative strength. I was actually going to call this section statistical arbitrage, but relative velocity is a more specific term that we can use to describe the filter that we will be considering in this session. The technique is very closely related to pairs trading, so let's first look at that strategy. Pairs trading, or statistical arbitrage, is a stock trading strategy that attempts to be market neutral and capture the spread between two correlated stocks as they return to their mean price. In simple terms, it's buying and simultaneously selling two stocks that follow each other when they diverge from their normal pattern. So a trader that finds two stocks that tend to move together, they would buy stock A and sell stock B at the same time. Pair trading is also done with options, futures, baskets of stocks, indices, etc. In this session, we're going to be focusing on the relationship between a single stock and the sector that it belongs to. But first, let's look at the nuts and bolts of traditional pairs trading. Typically, this is how it's done. Step one, with traditional pairs trading, you would look for two stocks that have a high correlation. For an example, Carnival Cruise Lines and Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. Step number two, visually confirm correlation using charts. You can overlay one stock on top of the other one to confirm that there is a high correlation between these two stocks. After you've done that, we move on to step three and you're gonna create a price ratio chart. A price ratio chart is calculated by dividing one stock price into the price of the other stock. Normally, plotted as a line chart, they measure the deviation from the mean between the two stocks in the pair. After you've created your price ratio chart, you're going to move on to step four and you're going to go ahead and enter your orders. You're going to buy one stock and you're going to sell the other one short. A lot of pairs traders will wait for the price ratio line to move to its first or second deviation from the mean. Bottom line, what we're looking for here is going long the lagging stock and short the overperformer. We do this because there's an expectation that there's going to be some profit in the spread between these two stocks. As I mentioned, we're not going to engage in pairs trading per se, but we're going to use a pairs trading strategy as a filter for our core trade setup. So how do we use this strategy as a filter? We're going to use relative velocity as a filter for our core trade setups by comparing a single stock with its industry sector. When we look at our patterns, the core trade setup, the, the pattern with the X point, we're going to anchor the X point of the pattern with the data that we receive from the sector that it belongs to. And that's gonna confirm your trade direction. It sounds kind of murky right now, but the next slide is gonna make it clear. And you might be thinking, why should we compare the stock with the sector? Why don't we compare it with the market index that it belongs to? Well, the broader market index has a lower correlation than it would with its individual sector. And that's why we're gonna use the sector instead to confirm our trade direction. H.M. Gartley discussed this topic extensively in his Stock Market Experience Tables published in 1940, and he outlined about 50 different sectors. And uh, the ones that we'll be referring to, it's about a dozen, 
and uh, there's subsectors, if you will, of those uh, major ones, but we're just going to focus on those, those 12 pretty much. So in simple terms, if a sector is leading your stock pick, then use that information to confirm your buy signal. If you have a buy signal and you look at the sector and the sector is lagging, that's a problem. We're not going to be a buyer. If you had a sell signal and the sector is lagging, yes, that would be a confirmation of that type of trade. So what does this look like? All right, so what we want to do is we want to display our regular price data from our individual stock, and that's the green line here. And then we want to overlay the sector data on top. The important point, and I'll show you this on the next slide, an example in the charting program, Market Analyst, is that we want to anchor the sector data here at X. And you want to determine where the sector lies in relationship to the D point. So in this example here, we have a bullish trade set up. The D point is over here. It's complete here. We want to be looking for buy signals. Now we overlay the sector information. We anchor it here at X. And we see where is the sector? Is it outperforming? The stock that we're trading and if that's the case we want to be buying because that's a confirmation you see how the blue line is above the D point if the blue line was below the D point this filter would invalidate the trade and you wouldn't take it this filter works great with trend continuation trades now let's open some charts and see what this looks like in market analyst So here's a daily chart of Bed Bath & Beyond on the NASDAQ. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is identify a potential, potential bearish pattern here. So let's draw the emblem. This is a trend continuation pattern. And uh, so there's our XA and let's do the quad. All right, so now we're going to scale this. It's just about there anyways. Lock that up. Okay, so this would have triggered a um, bearish 52 right here on this angle. And what we need to do now is use the relative velocity sector uh, on the chart to, to anchor it here at the X point and to see if that's going to confirm this bearish trade setup. So what do we do for that? Um, so right click the chart, go here to overlay left scale and Bed Bath Beyond is a consumer discretionary um, belongs to that sector so what we're going to do is find out where that is in the list of symbols in market analyst and i'm using the spider symbols so go just type in spdr and then type in sector okay so the spiders are listed on the amex you can see here uh, the first list has to do with international sectors we don't want that we want the domestic ones so we look over here and you can see at the bottom consumer discretionary so we're going to click that and depending on what data feed you can choose some other data but generally speaking this is going to serve our purposes here and now you can see that uh, the left scale is reflecting that spider index and you can see the green line here is showing the closes it's a close only line we can adjust that line up and down here on our chart and remember i said we need to anchor it to the x so you look over here here's our x point 
this bar, the close is right here. So you want to anchor the close of this line right onto that close. So let's do that by moving the scale on the left hand side here. We're going to move it right up to the close like this. Okay. Now what does this tell us? Well we can see that the index was above the A point. We don't really care about that. What we what we really care about is um I'm sorry this uh we didn't lock up the chart here. Let's do that. Scale lock the chart right there. Boom. Okay, we got that. Got the cell signal on the, the 52 degree angle, and then we check the, the line from the index. Now, does this line confirm a bearish trade setup? It does because the line, the index, is weaker than what this cell signal is telling you. This line has to be below um, this, this angle here and that's that's going to confirm the direction of the trade. If this line was above here, the sector would be stronger and that wouldn't indicate that you're trading in the right direction. So that's how we're going to use this sector index information. Now sometimes you might think, how do I know what sector a particular stock belongs to? There's a number of different ways to do that. However, uh, an easy way in market analyst is to go to their sector map. Uh, if you want to display a sector map, you can go to new and uh, I think it's here. Yeah, se sector map under multi-code chart and uh, just find out what stock that, um, what, what exchange the stock is trading on. So we see NASDAQ here. So you'd open up a sector map of the, uh, of the um, NASDAQ. And then we, I actually have that chart open already, so I'm going to click it here. And by default, that sector map doesn't display like this. It looks like this. This is cool and everything, <laughs> but we need to display it in grid view. And we can see at the top we have the different sectors. And then underneath that, the individual stocks. So remember, we're looking for Bed Bath & Beyond. We can click code here. So we sort alphabetically according to code. And then we just scroll down to find Bed Bath & Beyond, which is BBBY. Okay, where is it here? There it is. Okay. So we can... We can sort this according to a different criteria. What we're really interested in right now is to look over here to the extreme right hand side. It says, what sector are we in? Consumer discretionary. And so that would be the sector we're looking for. So that's an easy way to find what sector a particular stock belongs to. There, like I mentioned, there's a number of different ways to do that, but most of us uh, uh, that use these techniques have market analysts. You might as well just use that. Okay, so the, there's a Bed Bath & Beyond that shows us a um, potential bearish trade setup using the sector uh, information uh, to confirm the direction of the trade using that information as a filter. And there's a number of different ways that you can execute this trade. We talked about Paris trading briefly. You could, in this situation, sell, um, sell Bed Bath & Beyond and buy the sector index and as they uh, move together um, and close the spread you can uh, liquidate the position so there's a number of different ways that you can um, use this information to execute a trade but we're just simply using it to confirm the direction of the trade so let's look at another example we're going to look at ADP here So we have uh, ADP here, daily chart, and a bullish 52 trade setup. I've already applied the emblem, the quad. I've locked up the scaling here. Save you some time looking at this example. I've used the alternate, alternate quad method. The tip of the quad is pointing to 52, closer to 52. 
So this is going to be our trace setup off the 52 degree angle. You can see that the timing on the quad was almost perfect and it just reversed right here. Now we got to look at our relative velocity comparing the sector uh, versus the actual stock itself. And ADP is a technology company, so we're going to use the uh, technology sector, Spider from Amex, and that's the green line here that I've displayed. I've already anchored it here at X. And remember to get that data on the screen, left click, go to overlay left scale, type in the symbol. If you don't know um, the symbols, like I said, SP, DR, or spider, sector, and skip the internationals at the top unless you want to use that data. But down here, here's the domestic stuff. And we can see that our technology sector spider is XLK. Uh, we would use that. You would overlay that data and uh, you drag uh, the left price scale will move this uh, green line around like that. And we'll, in this case, it's moving the, the price data, but just anchor it right there. Okay. Now, this was a bullish trade setup. So what do we want to see? Do we want to see the sector being weaker than the stock? No, we want to see the sector stronger. We want to see the stock in that sector as an anomaly, one that has shown some uh, short term weakness. And that's what this correction is doing. It's showing some weakness in contrast with the strength of the sector. So the assumption is if the sector is strong, that this is just um, an unusual stock in that quiver of stocks within that sector that is going to move back to the mean. And you can see that the sector data starting from X, it just went straight up and uh, uh, our, our stock here, ADP, went into a correction. And so the expectation, of course, would that would be that this stock is going to lift and, and move back to the mean. Like I mentioned, you can do a Paris trade here where you're going to sell the index and buy the stock itself. But once again, just trying to keep it simple here, trying to find the end of a correction and using that sector index information to confirm the direction of the trade. And that's what we have here with a strong index and a short-term weakness in the individual stock. So awesome trade setup here, using this as a filter. So let's review what we covered off here today. We're going to use relative velocity as a filter. What is relative velocity? It was a term coined by H.M. Gartley in the 40s. And today, most people refer to this technique as relative strength. So how do we use relative velocity or relative strength? We want to compare the strength of an individual single stock compared to the sector that it belongs to. We looked at using the spider indices on the Amex is an easy way to do that with our domestic U.S. stocks. Obviously, we can't do this with other products that don't belong to an index. If you like to trade individual commodities, maybe you like silver, you could use a metals index. If you like to trade corn, you can use an agricultural index. The list goes on, but for our purposes, I like to trade individual stocks and I like to compare those individual stocks with the sector that they belong to rather than the broader index like the S&P, which really dilutes the relationship between the two. I would rather compare an individual stock with the sector that it belongs to. So to compare the strength or relative velocity of a single stock with a sector, we would plot the data of the sector on the chart and then anchor that data at the X point of the pattern that we're trading. And to do that, we looked at plotting uh, a close only line to make it clear as to what is being displayed there visually. And then we would move the scale we would overlay that sector data right on the chart and then move it up and down to anchor 
the X point. Once we've anchored the X point, we want to compare the sector data with the individual stock data and the sector. If you're looking for a bullish trade setup, we want the sector data to be above where the current market is, where your trade setup is. And if you're bearish and you have a bearish trade setup, we want to see the uh, sector data weaker than where your trade setup is. You want to see that line below um, the current market data. So that's how we use the sector data information to confirm the direction of our trades. So that's it for the session on filters. In the next session, we're going to look at an alternative instrument that we can use in our trading. Stay tuned to learn more about the best option strategies to use and how they can be used to further reduce our risk.